So welcome to the lesson on polynomial division. You'll notice that the previous uh, lesson put addition, subtraction, and multiplication all together, but left division out. And that's because polynomial division is a little tricky. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, pretty easy. Division can get a little messy, a little ugly. So let's look at the two different ways we can do it, long division and synthetic division. Synthetic division um, is faster but it's very limited. It, it only works if you're dividing by um, a linear term, right? a term that's x plus or minus some constant. So it only works if you're trying to divide by that. So keep that in mind. So let's uh, look at an example that involves uh, just regular old long. So let's look at an example that um, uses regular old long division. So let's say you have um, x squared plus 2x minus 3 and you're going to divide that into uh, 5x to the fifth plus 2x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 5. The first thing you'll notice is that you're missing some pieces, right? There's a power of 5, a power of 4, but there's no power of 3, right? Then there's a power of a 2, then there's no single power of 1, and then you have a constant. So in order to do long division or synthetic division, you always have to um, write out all of your powers, right? So you have to change this to x squared plus 2x minus 3 into 5x to the fifth plus 2x to the fourth plus 0x cubed, right, minus 3x squared plus 0 x plus 5. Now we have all of our powers. So now long division is really just like doing normal division with numbers. You take this piece and divide it into this piece and you start with the largest one you can, right? So x squared can go into x to the fifth. So, you know, how many times? x squared times what will equal this piece? and it's going to be 5x cubed. And just like with normal division with regular numbers, once you have your term up here, it's just a matter of multiplying it by each of your pieces. So 5x cubed times x squared, of course, gives you 5x to the fifth, or you know you wouldn't have chosen that and then 5x cubed times this piece, so plus 5 times 2 is 10x to the fourth, and then times this piece gives me negative 15x cubed. And now it's just a matter of subtraction, which is why you needed this little placeholder, otherwise you would have been trying to subtract an x cubed piece from an x squared piece, and that just doesn't work. Okay, so I've got two of them minus 10 of them, so here's a negative 8 of them. I tend to like to um, change signs, right, and then add. It's the same thing as subtracting. It's just a little uh, safer because with this minus here, you might forget that when you're minusing a minus, you actually end up um, adding. Whichever way you're comfortable with, but um, I prefer to change signs and add. So this is plus uh, 15x cubed. And then if you can think, you just bring down the next one, minus 3x squared, and then repeat the process, right? It's all about getting this piece to fit into the leading term. Right? So x squared times what gives you this? Well, that's going to be times negative 8x squared, right? Because that gives you negative 8x to the fourth. And then times this gives you 
negative 16x cubed and then plus 24x squared, right? Because the negative times the negative. Again, I'm going to change signs and this becomes a minus um, and add because it, it just it it's easier for me to wrap my little pea brain around it and not make mistakes. So those go away, right? You add these, you get 31 of them. And this is negative 3, negative 24, so that's negative 27 of those. Now you're bringing down the 0x piece. Do it all over again. Plus 31, right, to get x squared into this piece now. So that's 31x squared plus 31 times 2, that's a 62, oops, x squared. Let me see if I can clean that up. There we go. Plus 62x squared and then minus 93. That's 31 times negative 3. So last time, I can change signs, right? Make it a minus, a minus, and now a plus. Change signs and add. Those go away. 62 minus 27 gives me 35x. Sorry, these are. Um, I messed this up. This should have been an x, right? So they give us these are x cubes. I'm sure you were all screaming at the screen. You screwed it up. You screwed it up. Okay, but everything else is the same, right? Um, because in order to get an x squared, I needed an x here, right? So x times this x cubed. Da, da, da. So that means this last piece has an x on it. Duh. Now they all have the same. Uh, exponents, right? Same powers. So this is uh, 35x squared. Um, this is plus 93x. And then last but not least, you bring down the 5. And now, one last time to get it to fit into there, it's going to be plus 35. So there's my 35x squared plus 35 times 2, right? Gives me 70x and then 35 times 3 is minus 105. Change signs and add, right? Change that to a minus, minus, and a plus. Those cancel. I've got 93 minus 70 gives me 23x and then 5 plus 105 so plus 110 and so now you'll see that um, this leading term is too small for x squared to go into it right because I only have an x and so once you get to that point you're done you can't do any more uh, division and this whole thing ends up becoming uh, your remainder so your answer would be that polynomial plus remainder, right, 23x plus 110, or oftentimes instead of writing it as a remainder, they'll just write it as a fraction. So at the end, they'll just put a plus uh, 23x plus 110 all over your original thing, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Because when you divide this whole thing, you get this stuff plus this remainder that is still being divided by that, right? So that's why it ends up being a, a fraction. So that's long division. It really is just that simple. I know it seems complicated, but that's just because we went through all the steps really slowly. You're going to have some, some easier ones to start off with, but the idea is just take this first piece, right? You're always dealing with the leading term and figuring out how it can go into the first piece and then how it can go into this one and then how it can go into this one and then this one and then finally the last one. You go, oh, doesn't go into the last one, so I'm done. 
Okay, synthetic division, like I said, only works when you're um, dividing some polynomial, right? So you have to have uh, some sort of polynomial that's being divided by x plus a constant or x minus a constant. It doesn't matter because x plus a constant, you can just let your constant be a negative number, right? But you have to be dividing by something of that form. So it only works in that case. So the, our previous example wouldn't have worked, right? Because we're dividing by a whole polynomial, not just a linear, what's called a linear term. So for synthetic division to work, you have to have something like, um, let's do uh, 3x cubed uh, plus 2x squared uh, minus 5 divided by x plus uh, 2. Okay? So if we were trying to do that, the way it works is you write all the coefficients of the thing that you're dividing into. So you have a 3, a 2, a 0, and a negative 5. Where did the 0 come from? Hopefully you're all screaming at the, at the screen. It came from the missing x term, right? You've got a plus 0 x's in there. So just like before with long division, you have to put in placeholders. Anytime you have a missing power of x, you got to put something in there. And then here's where it um, gets a little um, easy to forget. With synthetic division, um, you're technically looking for something of the um, x minus c variety. Um, but basically, it, that's the easiest way to remember it, is for synthetic division, you have to divide by x minus a constant. You don't have to, it's just, um, I said it'll work for both, and it will. It's just, it, it works if you're dividing um, by this, then c goes here. But c, because we have a plus, isn't this the same thing as x minus a minus 2? So basically what I'm saying is you can divide by x plus a constant or x minus a constant, but uh, the form of synthetic division works with this form, the minus. So you just have to kind of turn it into that. So dividing by this is the same thing as dividing by this. So your synthetic division now is being divided with a negative 2. Okay, so that's the first hurdle. The second thing to remember is you just bring down the first number and then now it's just a matter of um, multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding. So negative 2 times 3 gives me negative 6 um, and then add. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Now negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Add, you get 8. Negative 2 times 8 gives me negative 16. All right? Add those, you get negative 21. The last number is always your remainder. So, and then these numbers are your coefficients of your new polynomial. Because you started with a polynomial of degree 3, you divided by a polynomial of degree 1. Remember our rule? If we have a cubed over a to the 1, we get a to the 3 minus 1 equal a squared. Right? Well, the same thing works here with x's. We started with a power of 3, we divided by a degree of 1, we're going to be left with, this is now going to be a polynomial of degree 2. So our answer is going to be 3x squared minus 4x plus 8, right, plus our remainder. So minus 21 over x plus 2. And that's synthetic division. Remember, it only works for... Um, things that are being divided by that simple linear term. So I don't tend to use it a lot, and you really aren't going to be responsible for it, but I thought I would show it to you just in case you were curious. What you really should do is practice long division.